Gracefully shutting down your server is a must-have and comes with many advantages. That's why in this video we are going to take a look at how to gracefully shut down your server properly in Go. So let's just first clarify the question, what is even a graceful shutdown? Imagine you have a server that just gets hundreds of requests per second and if you push a new version of your app or just restart the server there are several questions to ask. Are your database connections closed safely and what about file uploads that are only halfway done? Now without a graceful shutdown you basically risk to lose data, have corrupted transactions or just have memory leaks. Go gives you the tools to shut down responsibly. Okay let's get started with our simple plain old Golang project here and what we're going to do is we are going to check out how we are going to create the server first. Now what I would like to have are basically two functions. The first one would just create the server itself and then the second one would just run the server. The reason behind that is to make things more testable for us. So for instance what we could say is just server and then we are going to create this function here in a minute which we will call create server and this create server function just returns an HTTP server so it will look something like this here create server and then it will return an HTTP server so a pointer to an HTTP server and then we also need the run server function so this create server function just configures the server behind the scenes and just sets up this server struct in general and this run server function which we will also create in a minute will return an error so we can say if error and then error is not equal to nil, we will just fatal F here. Now feel free to use proper error handling here, but I'm just going to fatal F this run server functionality if something goes wrong. Because I think it's quite clear if something goes wrong while running the server, then we would just terminate the whole application. And in here we are going to say server error and then percent %v and then we just use the error here. Okay, let's just create this run server function here. This is going to return an error, but we are going to leave it as it is right now. Let's just focus on the create server function here. Now, as I said, this create server function just creates or initializes and configures our HTTP server. And it is going to return a pointer because in the end, we want to allow the caller to modify the server settings if really needed. So we can safely return here and then we say HTTP.server and then we are going to specify the address here. We are just going to use the port 8080. So this just means that it is going to listen on the port 8080 here. And then we are going to define the handler here as well, which we will define in a minute. And here we are just using our multiplexer that we are going to define now. So let's just create this new HTTP request multiplexer here by just saying http.newservmux. I think I've also created a video just about this whole creating a server from scratch or creating a web server from scratch and go so feel free to check out this video if this just goes too fast for you. But with this create server function what we are going to do is we are going to register a really simple route here. Now I'm going to make things really simple here and I'm going to just define the route and the logic of the route inside of our create server function functionality. Obviously in a production app you can just create files and different handlers and all that fancy stuff. But for demonstration purposes I'm just going to say here max and then handle func. Now the route is going to be slash slow and then we're going to define the function right here. Now what this will do it will just simulate a long running operation that takes around eight seconds to complete. So what we can do is just print something here. Let's just say slow request started. And then we're going to say time dot sleep and then eight times time dot second. And then in the end, we are just going to say f printf. We are going to use w here as the IO writer. And then we say slow request completed at percent v backslash n. And then we say time dot now. Right, quite simple. This percent v just basically prints the value using Go's default formatting rules for that specific type here, which is in this case just a time type. Okay, pretty cool. We are kind of done with our create server function. Really simple, really straightforward. So let's get to the magic. Let's get to the graceful shutdown or the run server function here. I think it's fair to say to first specify what this function even does. So basically it manages the complete server life cycle. So the startup, the running and also the graceful shutdown. Because as you might know, this create server does not start the server or it does not handle anything gracefully, right? And we will actually implement this in the run server function here. Now we are going to define 
define a few function parameters right here. So what we need is first off the context itself. So we are going to say CTX and then context.context. .context. Again, I think I've said this multiple times already, but I will make a video, I promise you, about this whole context functionality in Go. Then we do need the server itself or the server configuration. So we can pass in the pointer here, HTTP.server. And then we also need the shutdown timeout, which will be as a type just time dot duration. Okay, so why do we need these three parameters here? Now the context itself is just for external cancellation. So this could come from the parent application, for instance, then we have the server, I think it's quite straightforward, it's just a HTTP server instance to run. And then we also have to shut down timeout, this basically just means how long to wait for active requests to complete during the shutdown. You will actually see in a minute what I really mean with this timeout. Okay, so as you might know, the listen and serve function, so this function here, listen and serve, is a blocking operation. So basically this listen and serve function just blocks until the server shuts down or encounters an error. And because we want to attempt a graceful shutdown whenever there is a signal from the outside, now this could be for instance a sig term signal, which is just used by Kubernetes during a pod shutdown, we'll actually have to use this listen and serve function in a go routine and then in the outside basically listen for these signals right so what we could do is just go funk and then spawn this go routine right here now this listen and serve can return an error so if error right and then we just check if the error dot is basically an http error server closed error we need to handle this error and we kind of need to also return this error right and this is going to be a little bit more complex because we can't just return the error here, right? Because then Go just thinks that this return error belongs to the Go routine function right here, which is kind of wrong and therefore we have to use channels. So what we could do is we could define a channel up here. Let's just say server error. And then we are going to make a channel here. So shan error and then one. I'm going to explain why we are using a buffer channel right here in a minute. But what we can then do is we can just send the error to the server error, right? We are only sending actual errors to the channel and not the expected shutdown error, right? So right here, it's really important to know that we check if the error is error server closed, which is expected during a graceful shutdown. And therefore, we kind of need to do this check right here. And then we are only sending the actual errors to the channel and not the expected shutdown error. I hope this is kind of clear. So what we can then do is just close the channel right here. So here we are really closing the channel to signal that the server go routine has finished. And then let's just add a really simple print line up here where we will just print starting server. Really simple. Okay, so why do we need a buffer channel here? Now again, here with this make channel error, we are just creating a buffer channel to really capture the server startup errors. And we are going to make this channel buffered with the size one, so the go routine won't really block when sending the error here. I've made a separate video just about these channels and go routines in general, so feel free to check out this video as well. Okay, so we are done with this go routine right here. Again, this just starts an HTTP server in a separate go routine, which just prevents blocking the main thread, allowing us to listen for shutdown signals. Okay, so let's actually listen for these signals, right? And what we can actually use is we could use the signal.notify function from the OS package here. Now this notify function itself just takes in a channel and signals. And it's important to note that this function definition right here just expects this type right here, right? So a channel of OS signal, but it's important to highlight that this is only a write only channel, right? So this function only writes to the channel and never really reads from the channel. So it expects a channel and signal. So let's just create this channel here, which will be of type OS.signal because remember the function definition right here expects a write only channel, which has a data type OS.signal. So we are using OS.signal right here as well. And we are going to make this buffered as well. And we're going to just define the size here as one. Then we're going to pass in stop right here as the channel. And then we are going to define the signals. Okay, that looks kind of complex. What is actually going on here? So first off, we are going to create a channel to receive these OS signals. And we are going to define the buffered size here as one to really prevent blocking when the signal is 
ascend and to avoid race conditions where signals arrive before your code is ready to even receive them. Here we are really only caring about whether a signal happened and not how many signals happened and with this buffer the signal can be queued even if the receiver isn't ready yet. And that's why we use this buffered size 1 right here. Now then we have the signal.notify function. Now this signal.notify function just lets your app listen for OS signals like sigint for instance. Now you could use syscall.sigint here or just os.interrupt like I did. And this os.interrupt is just essentially an alias for syscall.sigint. However, this constant is platform independent. And overall this constant just represents the interrupt signal which is sent to a process when you press Control c in the terminal for instance. And SIGTERM as I said earlier is just used by platforms like Kubernetes during a port shutdown. So when the app does not really handle the shutdown gracefully right here, it could exit mid request when SIGTERM actually happens or is sent by Kubernetes or Docker. And this is why we have to listen for this signal. Okay, let's just get going with a really simple select statement here. And we are just using this select statement right here to just wait for multiple channel operations simultaneously and whichever channel receives data first will be executed first. So let's just listen for the error right here from the server error channel because remember we didn't really handle this error in the server error channel and if the server really failed to start or encountered a runtime error we are going to return immediately as there's nothing really to shut down gracefully. So we're just going to say return error and obviously we need to receive the data here from the server error. All right let's just do the same thing for stop so we try to receive data from the stop channel. Now this could just mean that we've received an OS signal like sig term for instance. And here we are just going to initiate the graceful shutdown. So we are just going to say log.println and then shutdown signal received. And then remember we do have this context right here. Obviously we need to listen for the done operation of this context. So we can just say basically ctx.done. So this just means that the parent context was cancelled and this allows for programmatic shutdown from other parts of the application and here we're going to say log.println context cancelled. Right, quite simple, but we're not done yet because we didn't really shut down the server. Right now we are only listening to the operations or the data or the signals from the stop channel, the error channel and the context itself. So what we are going to use is we are going to basically use the server.shutdown function which expects a context right here. And we are just going to define the function argument shutdown context which we will define and initialize in a minute. Now this shutdown function can return an error. So if error, right, and then error is not equal to nil. So right here we attempt to basically execute a graceful shutdown and server.shutdown just stops accepting new connections and waits for active requests to complete. And it respects the context timeout we basically defined as a function argument here. So let's just define the shutdown context quickly. So what we can do is shutdown context and then cancel. And we are going to say context.with timeout. Here we are going to say context.background and then we are going to use the shutdown timeout here. Right, so this is just a basic context with timeout for the shutdown process. And this just ensures that the shutdown doesn't really hang indefinitely if requests really do not complete. And we use context.background here as the parent to really avoid inheriting cancellation. Then we are also just going to defer the cancellation right here of the context itself to just clean up the context to prevent resource leaks. Now if we do receive an error from the shutdown function we are just going to return it and if we actually did receive a timeout we are going to close the server and this close function actually also returns an error so we are going to say if close error and then close error is not equal to nil we are just going to basically join the errors right here. So error and then close error, right? So this right here just means that if there is a basic error with the shutdown functionality, we are going to immediately close the listener and all active connections. Now this is important to implement because it is only called after shutdown times out, which really preserves the graceful behavior when possible. And then in the end, if really both shutdown and close really failed, we are just going to combine the error 
arrows. And arrows.join really just creates a single arrow containing both arrow messages. Now, if we reach this end here, we can say that the graceful shutdown completed successfully. And then all active requests just finished within the timeout period. So what we can say is just return nil, and we can say log.println server exited gracefully. Right, so let's just go to the main function. So we are kind of done with this really huge run server function here. But what we can now define in the run server function as the function arguments is the background as the context itself. Then we can use this server here, which just points to our HTTP server. And then let's just define three seconds as the shutdown timeout. So let's just test this application here. Let's just create two terminals. And in the first one, we are just going to say go run main.go, which should just start the server. And then in the second terminal, what we're going to do is we are just going to say curl and then localhost 8080. And then we're going to hit the slow endpoint here. Remember, this slow endpoint is just a really long running operation, which takes around eight seconds to complete. So if we run this right here and then go back to the first terminal and we are going to shut down the server, we actually see that the slow request started, right? here then we see that the shutdown signal was received and then we see three seconds later that we do get a server error right here that the context deadline exceeded what this really means is that this long running operation we've started in this curl request was actually hanging and the server kind of terminated everything before this long running operation could succeed right so this is the way how we kind of prevent these long running operations to hang the server now obviously we can always adjust this shutdown timeout right Right here to be 10 seconds for instance and let's just clear this and run our main go application right here again and then we are going to curl this slow endpoint again and then let's just terminate the application here or the server and then what we can see is that the server exited gracefully and this is what we want right because we received a shutdown signal and then we've waited actually 10 seconds or in this case five seconds only because the long operation right here was started before the shutdown signal was received so we can see right here that the slow request completed successfully because we handled this request gracefully and we shut down our server gracefully okay and that's everything there is to know about gracefully shutting down your server in Go. Now in the next episode of this mini series, we are going to add a few unit tests for this functionality for shutting down your server gracefully. And if you'd like a free crash course on Go's concurrency features, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.